Welcome and greetings, career-minded superstars. You are listening to the exclusive Career Coach, your podcast for all things career. And I'm Lisa Edwards, the indispensable career coach for superstars just like you. Now let's dig into this week's topic, shall we? Go from dragging yourself to work each day to finding a job you love. The Career Spring program is for high achieving and ambitious mid level professionals like you who are looking for a job that uses your zone of genius, recognizes your value, and pays you what you're worth. If you're ready to learn more, schedule a complimentary consult using the link to my calendar in the show notes. Be sure to follow me on Exclusive Career Coaching on Facebook. Lisa Edwards on LinkedIn and Lisa.Edwards on Instagram. Greetings. How's it going? I cannot believe this is episode 249. And heads up, I have something special for you next week for episode 250. Really proud of that. I recently finished Jen Sincero's book, You Are a Badass, and one of the chapters in the book is called The Almighty Decision. And I really wanted to dive into this topic for this episode for several reasons. One of the things I talk with my clients about is a three-step process of decision making. Step one is giving yourself time to make and explore options to make the decision, but but limit that. Don't leave that open-ended. Decide how long, up front, how long you're going to give yourself. Number two, make a decision based on the information you've gathered and what your gut is telling you. And if the two don't agree, go with your gut. That has been my experience 100% of the time when my gut was telling me something different and I ignored it, I regretted that decision. And then number three, and this is the one that so many people miss, decide you have made the right decision. You don't get to waffle. You don't second guess yourself. You don't change your mind. You have your own back about the decision that you've made. I was actually in a networking group that I belong to And we were in this breakout session with three other people. There were there were four of us just yesterday. And one of the women was saying she was trying to decide between looking for a job, going back to work. She's she's not working right now. And this this thing that she wants to do as a business. And she said, well, I had decided that I wanted to do the business. But then I started applying to job, blah, blah, blah. And I put on my coach hat and I said, you have not made that decision because if you had made that decision, you wouldn't be going back on it and doubting it and questioning it and kind of being reactive to circumstances in your life that are causing you to kind of waffle and go back and forth. So why does all of this make so much, it is so important because so many people take forever to make a decision sometimes even over small, really inconsequential things, they have trouble deciding. And decision-making, in my opinion, is a muscle. And the more you exercise that muscle, the stronger and more dependable it's going to become. And in fact, starting with little decisions can be a really good way. If decision-making isn't your superpower yet, and you really want it to become your superpower, a great way to do that is to begin making quick astute decisions about small things. So in my work as a career coach and job search coach and a master resume writer, here are some of the indecisions I see my clients grapple with. They ask, you know, should I leave my current employer and go elsewhere or should I stay? Am I qualified to apply for this particular position? Should I ask for a promotion or and or a raise? Is my dissatisfaction with my career path or just my current employer? A lot of indecision around that. Should I make a career pivot? In other words, I'm going to leave my industry or my job function, stay in the other one. I call that a career pivot. Or should I completely reinvent my career, which means I'm going to start over with both my job function and my industry? Should I reach out to X? for help with my job search. I get that one a lot. And I think it's such an interesting question because what is the downside? It shows me when someone asks that question, it shows me that either they have a really poor understanding of the job search process and what networking is and or they are really not good decision makers. Should I stay employed or should I start my own business? That was the question that the woman yesterday was grappling with. Should I fully retire? 
or just downshift to a less stressful, more rewarding job. So now that I'm maybe financially and age-wise able to retire, is that really what I want to do? Of course, there are hundreds of other micro decisions I help my clients with, but those are some of the big ones that they grapple with. What are some of the decisions you might make in other areas of your life that have nothing to do with your career? I will lose X amount of pounds. I will begin an exercise program. I will eat healthier. I will begin dating again. I will buy a home. I will stop smoking, drinking, doing drugs, and whatever else maybe health habit-wise you want to get rid of. I will clean the clutter out of my house. I will make new friends. I will learn how to do X. That could be a new language, a sport, anything. And in her book, Jen Sincero tells the story of Henry Ford, who was determined to have all eight cylinders of the car engine cast in one block. This had never been done before, and his engineers told him it was crazy, it was totally impossible, couldn't be done. The engineers came back to him sometime later with even more evidence that it couldn't be done. They tried several times and failed every time. And Henry Ford simply rejected their evidence and ordered them back to the drawing board. He didn't care that they'd found X number of ways not that it wouldn't work. He wanted them to find the way that did. So he was willing to accept continued failure as a way to get to the to success. And of course, they eventually figured out how to do it, creating a V8 engine. I actually had one on my second car. So my first car was a 1970 Ford Maverick. And then when I went off to college, my mother wanted to upgrade. She never had a new car in her life, but she wanted a newer car. And she was willing to sell me her 1970 Ford Torino for whatever I could get for the 1970 Ford Maverick. So I sold the Maverick bought her Torino for a, a steal of a deal. Now, we won't talk about the gas mileage. It was terrible, but she could go. I took her out in the South Georgia. I was living in Tallahassee at the time, going to school. And I took her up to South Georgia in a very rural area, two-lane road. And I just decided I was, I was feeling brave one day. And I got her up to 115. And then I chickened out because she, she was just getting started. She was a hoss. So what is Sincera's point to all of this? So often, as did this woman that I coached yesterday, we think we've made a decision. We pretend that we've made a decision, but what we've really done is signed up to try until it gets too uncomfortable. And that's a language that if you hear yourself saying it or someone else, you know they have not truly made a decision. If they say, well, I'll try, I'll try to lose weight, I'll try to get a new job, I'll try to get a raise, that is not a decision, that is kind of a cop-out. So what do you have to be willing to do to withstand, you know, what, what do you have to put up with, if you will, to truly make a decision? You have to be willing to withstand family and friends laughing at you, questioning your decision, expecting you to fail, kind of waiting around to see it crash and burn. You have to be willing to withstand your decision to avoid or minimize your interaction with others who don't support your decision, at least for now. So in other words, who do you need to stay away from or minimize your interaction with in order to see this through to success? If they're not going to support you, you don't need their negativity and their doubt in your ear. You also may want to avoid social media, print, or other content that prevents presents evidence that your decision is the wrong one and that it's doomed to failure. So the last thing, if you've decided that you know, you're know you going to lose weight, the last thing you need to do is read a bunch of articles about how hard it is to lose weight and all the problems with today's menus and diets and you know the food that we put in our, the highly processed food that we eat and how overweight Americans are, all that stuff. You don't need to hear that. You also need to recognize that your own doubts are merely your primitive brain. So that, that brain that's been around since the caveman days trying to protect you, it sees anything as change as certain death. It sees because back in the day when that brain was what we had, that's what it was doing. It was keeping us from dying at the hands of a mastodon or another caveman or 
a woolly mammoth, who knows what. And so it, it takes you recognizing that that's what's going on in your brain, overriding it with your executive function brain, your prefrontal cortex, and saying, nothing's gone wrong. I'm, I appreciate your concern. I'm going to do this anyway. All right, what steps will you need to take to develop this decision-making muscle? First of all, deciding ahead of time what you will do each day towards your decision, towards making it a reality. Then doing the things even when you really, really don't want to. So, for example, when I'm working with clients on their job search, we create, we spend one session creating their job search strategy. And I talk to them about calendaring those results. So after we've decided the activities that they're going to be engaging in, I then have them calendar that in. And we talk about the fact that when that block of time comes up, they're going to want to do anything but those things but they've decided ahead of time that those things will get them their desired result of a new job and they're going to thank their primitive brain for its concern and its you know fear but we're going to do the things anyway we're going to use that executive function brain and do the things you also have to be willing to be uncomfortable sometimes really really uncomfortable and whether that's the uncomfort of learning what you need to learn to do the new things or the uncomfort of listening to others, you know, chide you when you don't have success right off the bat, you know, uncomfortable with your own brain telling you this is a big bad idea and you should stop, all of those things. You also have to become com- comfortable with what I quote call in quotes failure and reframing it as learning opportunities. I don't think of it as winning or losing success or failure. I think of it as winning or learning success or learning success or I know another way not to do it. And that's really all you've done. It's only failure if you give up and stop trying. All you've done by this quote unquote failure is learned one more way that it's not going to work to achieve your goal. And that narrows down the realm of possibility as to what will work. So that's valuable input. And then you also can use this opportunity and should use it as an opportunity to train your brain to resist immediate pleasure in in favor of the big picture, right? So I want to lose X amount of weight. Therefore, I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to resist the immediate pleasure of that tub of ice cream or that piece of cheesecake because what I want is weight loss. Here then are Jen Sincero's tips from the book, You Are a Badass, on decision making. So number one, she says, want it bad. You And here, here are some quotes. You have to want it more than the alternative. You need to have a 10-ton gorilla of desire behind your decision, or else you'll wimp out the second things get hard. This is going to really require you to be honest with yourself about what you really want to do because if you don't have that what does she call it a 10 ton gorilla of desire and it's you're basing your decision on what you think you should do you're going to have trouble sticking with it you're not going to want it bad enough you have to believe also that it is available to you regardless of any evidence to the contrary so not only do you want that business of your own in a 10 ton gorilla of desire kind of way but you also have to believe that it is a possibility it is fully available to you no matter what you read see or what others tell you to the contrary number two get good at it so many people have terror around the decision making process because they're afraid of making the wrong decision and this is where that waffling and, and or making hasty decisions just to get it over with. Let me just make a decision. But they're not really making a decision because they are fully intending to go back on it if they change their mind. And choosing to do nothing. I want to make it very clear that choosing to do nothing is a choice. So it is a decision. So don't kid yourself into thinking, well, I've been thinking about going back to college you know, but I haven't decided yet. Well, yeah, you have. You've decided, at least for now, not to go back to college. While you're busy thinking about it for the last two years, you've made a decision not to go back to college. If that sounds tough, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> a good strategy is to begin practicing on small decisions, making them quickly and changing them slowly. So kind of what I said at the outside. outset, what are some small things 
I can make a decision quickly, but not hastily. So I'm going to absorb the facts. But if I'm making a decision about, let's say, which book to read next, right? It should take me five minutes. I'm going to read the book jacket cover. I'm going to look at maybe I'm, I'm very individual. So I may look at the book cover itself. And I'm going to decide within five minutes, probably much less than that, which book I want to read next. I've gathered the facts, and I'm going to make sure that the time I spend gathering facts is in line with the importance of the decision. I'm not going to take all day to make a little decision, but but I, I'm going to allow more time as, as you know decisions get bigger. And also, you want to give yourself a deadline and stick to that deadline. All right, I'm going to... I'm going to do this kind of research. I'm going to look into this this decision in this way. And by noon today, I'm going to decide. Finally, (laughs) quit telling people and yourself that you are terrible at making decisions. Talk about confusing the universe. So if, if you're in this process, I'm going to get better at making decisions. I'm going to follow Lisa's instructions. But I'm still telling everybody I'm a terrible decision maker. I don't know how to make a decision. I don't know how to make a decision about this thing. The universe is like, what the heck? Like, we don't know how to help you. So stop it. That's one of my best pieces of coaching advice, by the way. I get my finger up in the face of my client and I say, stop it. (laughs) Number three, eliminate the negotiation process. Decisions are simply not up for negotiation. Have your own back about these decisions, as I've said before. The decision-making process is such a great opportunity for you to improve your relationship with the most important person in your life, you. As you have your own back on these decisions you begin to make, you begin to trust yourself more and more. Not only that, But others will notice that you are following through on your decisions and they will begin to trust you as well. Think about how beneficial that is in a work relationship, in a a partnership with a, a spouse or significant others. Your children, you're modeling that for your children. It's a win, win all the way around. So let's say you've decided to buy a vacation home on the beach by a certain date. I'm going to I'm going to buy it by, you know, April 1st. You know how much money you need in the bank and a friend comes along with an invitation to go to Bali for 2 weeks. Of course Bali is going to sound wonderful. Who wouldn't want to go there, right? I want to go to Bali. But you've decided to buy a vacation home on the beach by April 1st and you know based on your understanding of your finances that if you go to Bali it's going to delay your ability to buy that house. So you have your own back about the vacation home buying process. You thank your friend profusely. You tell her how much you wish you you could go. You tell her you hope she'll consider you the next time around. But this time you have decided to become a vacation homeowner. You made that decision. You have your own back. Number four, stick like glue. It takes tenacity, stick to to achieve your goals. I like the analogy of giving birth here. I clearly remember (laughs) when I was in about hour 12 of trying to exit a 10 pound, one ounce human out of my body that I told my then husband, I can't do this anymore. I can't. And his response was, you don't have a choice, Lisa. And he was right. I had no choice but to see this child having decision through to the birth. It was, I couldn't stop. There was no going back at this point. I want you to have that same sense of you don't have a choice with other decisions in your life. Not because you're boxed in by someone else's decision or a bad decision. This is your own decision for your life and it was a good one and you're going to have your own back about it. So you don't have a choice now. You want to focus on the desired result. Recognize that the inevitable bumps and bruises along the way are supposed to be there. This is not supposed to be easy. And you stay the course anyway. I love this quote from Jen's book. In order to change your life and start living a new one that you've never lived before, your faith in miracles and yourself must be greater than your fear. However easy or rough your birth process is, you have to be willing to fall down, get up, look stupid, Cry, laugh, make a mess, clean it up, and not stop until you get there, no matter what. And then finally, which she has, 
I think it's interesting in every chapter of her book, whatever her steps are for that, that chapter's topic, the last one is always love yourself. But she comes at it from a different angle each time. So for the decision-making process, she says, because you can do anything, love yourself because you can do anything. And it's much easier to get there by loving on yourself along the way than by hating on yourself. And when you think about that, that is true about any goal that you set yourself. If you can love yourself to that goal, you're much more likely to be successful than if you hate yourself there. You can't hate your weight loss off. You can't hate your financial problems away. You can't hate your job away. So I want to invite you guys to make a decision today. It can be a really small one if this is a skill that you're not highly yet, yet highly developed in, or it can be you finally getting off that non-existent fence and making a decision about something that you've been contemplating waffling about for some time. And then I want you to congratulate yourself for changing your life forever, because in the process of making that decision and going through these steps to reach your goal, you will be forever changed. Way to go, you. All right, I hope this has been helpful. I hope it's given you some food for thought on how to make decision-making your superpower. I can tell you this is something I've worked very hard on, and I've, I think it's, I've always been pretty good at this. This is not, not one of my struggles. I have plenty. This is not one of them. But I certainly have grown that muscle even more so through being a coach and being coached by wonderful coaches. So I hope that you take strides in this regard and I will see you next week. Take care. You've been listening to the Exclusive Career Coach with Lisa Edwards, CEO of Exclusive Career Coaching. It would be great if you would rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. Also, I want to be your career coach. So be sure to ask questions about your career management challenges and job search situation. Until next time.